Hello, how are you? This is Matthew, this is Stephen, and you are in the moments. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon here, Grand Parade Square, City Hall, Halifax, Nova Scotia. Before I go any further, I want to say a happy birthday to my wife, Jennifer. Love you so much. Thank you for being by my side for nearly 23 years. Happy birthday. Happy uh, birthday. So, uh, Stephen has been just a, a superstar here for the last week. He's going to pull the pin here and uh, head to Wolfville. Uh, get back some some strength just to detach himself from this property for a few hours so I'll be uh, taking the reins here looking forward to that because I absolutely love the community that we have built here at Grand Parade Square uh, just a few quick stories uh, we haven't done a live show since the storm here on Wednesday uh, there was another storm that rolled through the Maritimes last night Stephen can tell you about that because he was here on location uh, before the storm rolled in, uh, it was last uh, yesterday afternoon when Maria was in here. Uh, I've said many times, uh, if I had one magical power, I would love to turn inanimate objects, like to bring them to life so that they could share stories. Uh, some of the stories that have transpired here in this tent, this warming, warming tent that's been our home for 58 days. The story last night, uh, Maria was in here, just an incredible, incredible individual. We, we all shed tears last night in this tent, and it wasn't the first time that tears have been shed in this tent. So Maria, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, this is what makes everything worthwhile, what we're doing here, the interactions that we have. And last night's interaction was no different. It was just truly moving. It was an honor and it was a pleasure to be in your presence last night, Maria. Uh, a also, few days ago. Also, also Maria's uh, going to give us a hand. Yes. I mean, like she's just um, so yes. moved by what, what we're doing. So I didn't mean to interrupt no, you. No, we, it's, people come here to get a, a firsthand experience of what it's like here. So we love when people come to visit us uh, with the intentions of volunteering. We ask you just to do your research so that you know what you're getting yourself into. Uh, 58 days for us. So we welcome anyone that wants to come down and volunteer. If you want to come down and say hi, if you want to get to know the people that are here, I certainly encourage that. Uh, we had a beautiful lady here from the uh, Mi'kmaq community. Uh, Gertie was in here a few days ago. She did uh, see uh, saged. Smudging. Smudging, sorry. Smudging with sage, the whole property. Uh, Jen was here, Stephen and I. Uh, followed Gertie around. So we have pictures of that up on our social media. That was wonderful. And the last story that I'm going to share. Uh, a lot of the people that come in here, like an overwhelming majority of people that come in here to see us, to visit us, to learn a little bit more, have in some way been touched by being homeless themselves, uh, having a family member who has been homeless, and the circumstances become even worse when those individuals die in the elements. And we had a visit from a lady, uh, Bobby Blake. Bobby Blake from uh, New Glasgow? No, Cape Breton. Cape Breton, the, yeah. from the Cape Breton area. Glace Bay? Glace Bay, yes. Yeah. My geography with Nova Scotia, I'm still learning it. She was, made a quick stop in here, came all the way down into Halifax to Grand Parade Square to meet one of the organizers of this movement. And I happened to be here with Jennifer. So we had a quick chat and she was on her way to Toronto because she had found out earlier this week that her brother, Robert Blake, who was living in the Ontario, Toronto area, uh, he had been found in a tent, deceased. And they found him just a few days ago. And Robert Blake had been dead since September. No one was looking for him. It wasn't unusual for Robert to go missing for extended periods of time, but it was a real heart-wrenching five-minute conversation. An individual who was so moved by what Stephen and I and all our supporters are doing that she took the time to come down into Halifax to personally meet us was really, was really remarkable. I, I've had some incredible, 
encounters with many hundreds of individuals on this property and I do not regret one single day of being here and I know that we'll see Bobby Blake when she comes back from Ontario. So I like to give you the the heartwarming stories. Uh, anyone that saw our uh, chat yesterday with Bruce Frisco, uh, we had a, an overdose situation here just a few days ago while women were delivering hot meals to those that were not in medical distress. Now, Stephen, if you want to address that, you can. But uh, So that's just been my experience since our live uh, stream on Wednesday. It is a very active uh, property. It continues to be active, and I'll just turn it over to you, yeah. Stephen. Yeah, I'll just pick up on the uh, overdose. Uh, we received some training on these uh, amazing kits, Narcan kits. Um, and we had them readily available here. Actually, one of our residents actually saved uh, somebody's life on Friday night. And uh, I don't want to mention any names, but uh, you know who you are and uh, literally a lifesaver. It's been uh, one of those kinds of weeks. Uh, we don't know what takes place. Uh, some of the stories, you know, like literally we could write a book on the stories that we, and the, the encounters that we have. The uh, one great note this week was uh, we had a young fellow, Jacob. Uh, he was 19 years old. Uh, you know, I posted it on uh, our Red Shelter page, and people just watched the journey of uh, of Jacob. And he wasn't here very long. He was in Nova Scotia for about three months, and uh, we were able to arrange transportation uh, to get him to Toronto. And you know. His, his story is not unlike others, but uh, he was uh, heavily medicated with drugs uh, when he came down here. Uh, he followed a few people down here and uh, he got lost and uh, he told me that he cleaned himself up and he was ready to go home. And Part of the uh, challenge that we ran into with Jacob is that Jacob lost his ID in, uh, in Ottawa and uh, it was a challenge for him to get any IDs here. We didn't have time. Uh, uh, we were lucky uh, that we reached out to uh, Papa Ride. Actually, somebody has suggested that on Facebook, and uh, so we were able to arrange transportation, and I, and he didn't make it uh, back to Toronto. So that was uh, quite moving. Uh, the storms here, uh, again, uh, we're dealing with unhoused. Nobody should be outside here, and uh, we're in tents. Uh, last night was no no different than others. The wind going through here over 100 kilometers an hour, rain. Uh, we did uh, batten down the hatches with all of our tents. We had search and rescue come through here to get individuals out of here that didn't want to be here, and they went to a safe spot. Uh, yesterday morning, I posted up pictures of a couple of gentlemen that were uh, they arrived here in the middle of the night and they were literally sleeping by the fire and one gentleman, I actually showed you a picture, you didn't even realize that it was a gentleman mm. who was sleeping on pallets on the floor. Thankfully we were able to get uh, get him and others uh, a safe spot. So that's the kind of uh, world that we're living in and the day doesn't go by that uh, there's extra people that are coming through here today. Matthew, you've been working on getting lots of donations out on the table. Uh, Megan St. Rose came down and dropped off coffee. The The amount of donations, the amount of love and support that we're getting from uh, the community has allowed us to continue. The support is, uh, I, I have to tell you, it actually keeps us going uh, because we lose our strength sometimes. Uh, and just your words of encouragement, even if you see us, just say hi. And we get that a lot, and, uh, and I thank you for that. I could go on with a lot of other stories and everything, uh, but I, I did want to do a, a GoFundMe update for everyone, just to uh, uh, give you some information on that uh, as well. So, But I'm going to start off um, on this one a little differently. Um, Matt and I started here almost 60 days ago and we had no idea that we'd be at the state that we're at here right now and through the generosity and support of our donors, um, people dropping off donations, it's funny it's shaking, the, uh, we have wind out here and we're inside the tent, 
has uh, allowed us to continue and um, it's it's heart moving and uh, I'm not I hope I can get through this one but okay I'm just gonna take a sec it's heartwarming and uh, there's a lot of weight on our shoulders it's just Matthew and I uh, Matthew's uh, wife comes down to help out uh, we do have occasional volunteers that come through here but you know 24 hours a day seven days a week um, we have eyes and ears on this project and it's a lot so that's all we literally log hundreds and hundreds of hours I I think we're probably close to 2,000 hours since we started here and I just did a week of seven days here 24 hours um, just being here and uh, because of the storms and everything so and believe me we want to be here uh, Matthew and I uh, we stopped working in order to do this project that's how committed we are with it so believe me when I tell you that we're all in we're all in uh, we're hoping that there's going to be announcements coming up uh, in the upcoming week that we can share with you that would help relieve the situation here but we don't know we work very closely with the province uh, and the city to see if uh, we can move some of our individuals to a better situation so um, so part of the, my DNA and uh, you know Matthew we just literally uh, we, we're connected by mutual family uh, friends and uh, up until you know two and a half months ago Matthew and I probably spent a total of 10 hours together mm -hmm. and uh, you're like a brother to me and uh, I'll go to war with you anytime Absolutely. so um, I come from Pictou County and uh, part of my My DNA is, I love Nova Scotia. And that's what motivated me personally and Matthew from the Maritimes to see this state of disrepair, our broken system. Um, the Wilsacks have been in Pictou County for over 75 years. My mother's still there, my sister's still there. I live in Wolfville. I've been there for 40 years. My wife, over 50. My wife, Jane Ann, has supported me so many times. Matt's been married for 23 years. Has a beautiful daughter of Moon. So believe me when I tell you, we're here, we're doing the best we can. Uh, our GoFundMe page has been very successful and I have to thank everyone that has contributed to that. Uh, even today I went on there and there was a church, uh, I believe it was St. Matthew's in Halifax here. Uh, they did a Christmas offering and they raised over $1,200. Like I was shocked. So. Uh, I know we touched the hearts of a lot of people here and believe me uh, we're doing everything that we can to make sure that this is a safe place and when we started our GoFundMe page it was to help the unhoused it was Matthew and Steve we done updates on there we detailed very clearly what our intentions are and what we are spending the monies on and uh, finally the funds uh, we got a bulk of the funds just as early it was just the first week in January so up until that point it was spotty um, so the funds up until this point we've used to purchase the tents we've used it to get heat sources in the tents we got lighting geared up we got extra extension cords um, everything in terms of a comforts of a shelter we, we are providing the average cost, tarps to put over, miscellaneous supplies, the average cost of getting the tent set up was upwards to about $700. We have over 24 tents here. Our daily cost is one of the items that right now for January and, and also in December, uh, we're buying food or we're doing uh, cards for our residents here. Uh, we're spending a couple hundred dollars minimum on that. Uh, we're doing uh, 
our, some of our tents have propane. I'm doing a propane run almost every second day. That's running 100 to 200 dollars a day. We have miscellaneous expenses, 100 to 200 dollars a day. We have sometimes residents that come here that have individual needs. We're helping out, and that's a, you know, private conversations that we have with them. Uh, one of the expenses that uh, has snuck up on us was uh, our security. And uh, Matthew and I were just so overwhelmed. Uh, we tried to get volunteers down here, but the security of our residents is paramount. And if we don't have a safe spot here, then it doesn't work. So our security is running upwards about $900 a day. So if you start doing the math, that's probably close to about $1,500 a day that's just running for our operating costs. So, and then of course we have an unexpected costs if somebody wants to go home, that type of thing. So it's been, um, a journey we still have uh, fuel in the tank as they say and we're going to continue to do what we're doing here and uh, believe me there's not a day that doesn't go by that we're not conscious of how we're spending the GoFundMe and we want to stretch it out as much as possible even last night the uh, GoFundMe helped with buying pizzas because it was a storm uh, we didn't have any meal train and we basically I uh, went out and grabbed some pizzas so Thank you, and this is literally keeping people alive. And if it wasn't for the GoFundMe page, I really don't know what would happen with a lot of these residents. And then when we set that up, it, the, the page was set up for specifically for Grand Parade. And at the same time, we said that we could, we'll help out where we can. But we have to, we have to uh, look after our residents here, and we have made donations. So. Uh, again, uh, thank you everyone, and I think that's probably about all, you know, the other part is about these uh, GoFundMe programs, anybody can do it. So what I was really excited about uh, when we first set this up, there's uh, some individuals, you know who you are uh, down in the Annapolis Valley area, they set up a GoFundMe page to buy some ice fishing shelter tents, and it worked. They've provided, uh, you know, it's a small GoFundMe, they provided five, five tents. Well, five tents means five people are not in the elements. We've had other people right across the country reach out to us. And as I said uh, yesterday in, in an interview, we even got an email from Oregon. And Oregon, uh, they have a huge unhoused issue down there. All across Canada, what we've been trying to achieve here at Grand Parade Square is to create a model that can be replicated, whether it's for emergency shelter, whether it's for tiny shelters, whether it's for a tiny house community, that can be done and learn from our mistakes. We made a lot of them, but I can tell you every day we're correcting them and the residents here, we've heard laughter here today for the first time. There is one resident, <laughs> I might as well. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for that, the GoFundMe thing. But uh, thank you for your trust. Thank you for your support on that. I'll, I'll just leave you with this one quick story because it was kind of funny today. Uh, some of our residents have some challenges, uh, physical and otherwise. And there is one resident has been mad at me and they're having challenges and I understand why they're mad because they don't want to be here. But for the past, I don't know, two weeks, mm. yeah. curse me every day. Curse me. I can't, I couldn't walk by the tent without bad words coming out of this individual's mouth. And I just, uh, I actually had to go sit by the fire every day just to get beaten on, to toughen up my skin and say, yeah, I'm ready. It's like I was in the ring. And today I went over, I'm ready for my, my, my sparring match. And the individual says, I love your shirt. It was a sweater. It was actually a gift. It was from Tom Jackson. And, uh, and I literally took my sweater off my back and gave it to that individual. And they said, by the way, do you have a, a Tim's card? I said, yeah, I do. Here's one there too. I said, Oh my God, thank you very much. And this person has never touched me since I've been here. Well, actually once they pushed me and they reached over and gave me a hug and gave me a kiss. Well, I, 
I thought I was going to go into cardiac arrest. So I, I had to I, I had to come in to tell Matthew. I said, Matthew, sit down. I have yeah. to tell you this story. I'm glad so, I was sitting down. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah. thank you, everyone. We're going to keep it short. And uh, again, uh, we're here, um, and we're going to continue the 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 war against homelessness. Yeah. And uh, we're hoping this week that we'll have some good news for you. Um, we'll post up, uh, we did an interview with Bruce Frisco. We went into the studio. Uh, we'll post that up and it will kind of give you some insight into some of the events that are going to take place this week. So anything else? No, I, I would just wrap it up by saying, uh, if you have any questions, if you want to come visit us, we're at uh, 1841 Argyle. We're at City Hall. I encourage anyone to come down, uh, volunteer, come get to know us, uh, come get to know some of the residents to make informed mm -hmm. decisions moving forward. Yeah, go ahead. So one thing I will say is that anybody can replicate what we're doing. So if you're in a particular town, a village, anywhere across the country, reach out to us. We'll tell you how to help the unhoused. It requires commitment. It requires tons of time of volunteerism. It requires funding. And it requires working with your local towns, villages, cities in order to do it. But this is something that we can all be a part of. And remember, the government is the government. But I can tell you, the people of this province and of Canada, we are the government. We are the people. So if we want to make change. Let's make change. So thank you very much. And Rhonda, you just joined us. And uh, just do a rewind. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, thank you. My name is Matthew. That's Stephen Wilsack, and you are now caught up in the moment.